next, we're going to come back and implement the list iterator method in a moment, but we're going to jump down here and we're going to implement another nested class called linked list iterator. This one is not static because it does need to access the instance variables of the enclosing class. Um, again, you can read that article for more details on that. All right, I'm going to be very transparent with you. This is some of the hardest code we're going to write. This is the hardest code we're going to write this week for the linked list iterator. Several years ago, I spent an entire class period doing live coding for a linked list iterator, and it was all wrong. Everything I wrote was wrong. And the next day, not only did we have to redo it all, like I had to try to help all the students unlearn all the garbage I had fed them the previous day. It was a disaster, okay? That's how easy it is, I think, to get confused by some of this iterator stuff, right? I've written iterators for decades, and still I totally blew it and had to redo it all. Um, so again, it's going to, the code will be misleadingly simple, and the concepts are really challenging. So after we're done today, let this like kind of sit and stew, come back to this code later, come back to the slides later, and walk through the code and slides again to get like a second pass at it to try to work through these concepts um, because they, they really are kind of, kind of challenging. Let's look at a picture first, okay? Here's our linked list. First refers to the first node in the list, next to the next node, next to the next node, so on and so forth. We're about to define the list iterator class. There are three instance variables, previous, position, and is after next, okay? As we implement this class, you'll see why we need all three of these. And as a bonus, all those restrictions we learned about in chapter 15 will make sense as we code this list iterator, which is kind of cool, okay? Um, I'm going to explain what each of these mean as it becomes necessary as we implement the methods. But to start, let's just define these three instance variables, um, and then we'll build on it from there. So where it says private data here, we're going to define those three instance variables. So position is of type node. Previous is of type node. And is after next is a Boolean. When we create a new linked list iterator with the default constructor, so public, public, linked list iterator, all of these variables will be in their default state. So either null or false. But again, let's explicitly say that. Um, we can't say this.position equals null because this refers to the linked list object, not the nested class. So here we can't say this. We have to say position equals null. And previous equals null. And is after next equals false. Again, those would be their values anyway when we create a new linked list iterator, but I want to be extra explicit that we intend for those values to be the case. All right, let's look at the picture again. So here's our new iterator. Let's say we invoke the next method, what happens, okay? Here's what it's going to look like. After we invoke the next method, position is going to refer to the first node in the list, okay? In chapter 15, I strongly encouraged you to visualize an iterator as always referring between two nodes. Does that ring a bell? And it made things like add and remove, I think conceptually easier to understand the behavior of. 
now like we can't do that anymore because now that we're actually implementing the linked list and actually implementing the iterator, there's no way to store a reference between two things. We got to refer to one node or the other. Okay. So unfortunately now we have to have a more complicated um, conceptual model as we actually implement the linked list iterator. And so position will always refer to the node we just iterated over. Okay. So when we make a new list iterator, we're at the beginning of the linked list. When we call next, we're going iterate to iterate over this node and therefore return a reference to Diana. And so therefore position will refer to the node we just iterated over. That's a big change, right? We'll come back to previous in a moment. Um, actually, we'll come back to previous right now. Let's do that. If I call next again, we're gonna iterate over Harry. So position will need to refer to the node that contains Harry. Previous is going to refer to the second to last node we iterated over, okay? And you'll see why we need to keep track of this previous in a moment when we start removing things, okay? Position always refers to the node we just iterated over. Previous refers to the one before that, okay? It's like our history. So let's try to actually code next. So we're going to have public. It returns a reference to the object. It's called next. Try that again. First, we have to do some error checking. Okay. Um, we haven't written this method yet, but we will shortly. Has next. If has next returns false, that means there is no next node. And so we can't iterate over it. So guess what? We're going to throw a new no such element exception just like we did before. Now we need to update all three of these instance variables. So I said previous refers to the like second to last node we iterated over. At this moment, we haven't yet iterated over the node. So we can say previous equals position. Because position refers to the, the node we just iterated over, or null if we're at the beginning, which is fine. So we're going to assign previous to position before we change position. We also need to keep track of, have we invoked next? Because thinking back to chapter 15, there's certain methods we can only invoke on an iterator if we called next or previous, right? We can't call remove unless we've called next. So we need to keep track of that. So since we're calling next, we're going to say is after next equals true. And then we've got uh, two different cases to deal with here. If position is null, that means the iterator is at the beginning of the list. And so the node we're going to iterate over is the node referred to by first. Okay. So let's do that. Let's have a condition here and capture this. If position equals null, we are at the start of the list, position, then position is going to equal first, because we'll iter iterate over the first node in the linked list. Otherwise, if position isn't null, it refers to this node, the node it needs to refer to is whatever node it's currently referring to, we need the next one. So we're gonna say position equals position dot next. And then regardless of what we're done, we can say return position dot data. There is so little code in this method. We've got like an if else, four assignments and a return statement. 
There is nothing simple about the next method. All right, let's try has next. Public Boolean has next. Two cases to consider here. One case is what if we just made a new list iterator, right? So what about if position equals null? If position equals no, null, like before, we are at the start of the list. Just because we're at the start of the list doesn't mean there's an element we can iterate over. The list could be empty. So we need to check for that. What if this list is entirely empty? So we're gonna say return first is not equal to null. If first equals null, the list is empty. So this will return false for has next, yes. If, first, if the list is not empty, first we'll refer to the first node, and so we'll return true. Otherwise, we have already started iterating through the list. We know that position is not null. What determines if we're at the end of the list? Well, we're going to return. Actually, I don't usually write this as an else. I like to write kind of my corner cases as the if, and then like the normal case, the generic case, just in the body. So I'm going to say position.next is not equal to null. If position.next is not equal to null, there's another node we can call next. If position.next is null, then we're in trouble. Well, we're not in trouble. There's just no, no, no node there. All right. We're going to pause here because I want to make sure you're prepared for tomorrow. We have two more methods to implement that we didn't get to, and that's not, I don't think that's going to stand in your way tomorrow because I'll show you why in a second. But um, we will come back and implement the add method and the remove method, but I do not want to rush those. Um, and there's the set method. That's pretty straightforward. I don't want to rush add and remove because they're complicated. So we're going to pause here for the live coding.